It's very nice to be here in a room full of people. This is very exciting. It's nice and packed and crowded. I don't see any masks. How do we feel about the pandemic? Probably kind of waning over maybe, even though it's, yeah, it's a little anxiety provoking. But here's the thing. I feel like even if it sort of like goes away, we're not gonna get like a day where it ends and we can all go, oh, it's over. Thank God it's finally over, you know? And I think we need that. In history, America has gotten that and it's been very helpful and sort of cathartic. Like. World War II, the Nazis surrendered. Let's give it up for the Nazis surrendering, guys. A lot of, yeah, thanks. Just a wonderful, cheap ploy to get uh, applause. And just check out, you know, who, who people are if they're not clapping. Um, so the Nazis surrender. We have VE Day, Victory in Europe Day. Everybody goes to Times Square, and they're celebrating, and there's a ticker tape parade, and everything's going on, and the, the government was, like, giving a nurse to every soldier to kiss. It was like, you get a nurse, and you get... And they were all like, yay! And then... So then that happens and everybody was like, oh, it's over, we move on, you know? And we need that, we need a VC day, like a victory over COVID day. We all go to Times Square, everybody's there with masks, and they go, one, two, three, and we rip our masks off, you know? And everybody's like breathing on each other and spitting in each other's mouths and kissing and fucking. And I want an orgy in Times Square, that's what I want. Thank you. And so, now somebody didn't clap for the Nazi surrendering or the orgy, <laughs> sir. No. So I, I've started a Kickstarter for the orgy, and it's uh, www.orgyintimesquare.org.org.gov, because I want the government to pay for it. I want a government-funded fuckfest in Times Square. Thank you. Right, so now you know, you know, a little about me. Um, <laughs> No, I, uh, uh, I don't really trust the government necessarily, implicitly. Uh, I thought it was very interesting recently that it took Republicans two, three weeks or whatever just to elect a Speaker of the House. I mean, they had five perfectly good white guys that they went through. You know how screwed up things are when Republicans can't be like, we agree on that white guy. Like, that was pretty rough. They went through, before they landed on Mike Johnson, which is a made up name, they, they went through a, a Jim, a Kevin, a Tom, and a Steve. You know, sometimes I'm like, is that a political party or a lacrosse team? You know, I kind of expected someone to be like, I nominate Brock. Brock would be dope. Speak, Brock. And Brock's like, yo, I think we should. It's my lacrosse moves. I clearly did not play. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm also single uh, for the same reason, you know, Brett is. Uh, divorced, <laughs> we, we broke up with each other. No, we, uh, we're getting along great, guys. It's really great. No, also splitting up, but I will say this. Uh, I, so I'm looking for, you know, gotta find somebody new to be with. That's always daunting, especially my age, because I'm in my late 30s, uh, and that I'm 48. Um, I'm 3018, guys, I'm 3018. Just go with me on that. So I try to find somebody, and this guy my age, like, you don't want to see them dating an inappropriate you know, woman, age-wise, it's just weird. So I found someone, she's age-appropriate for me, she's 24. And, and just to speak to the criticism of Leo, this is what's nice about the age difference. When you look at it this way, when, when I was her age, she wasn't born. And when she's my age, I'll be dead. And I feel like there's like a circle of life thing going on. It's, you can't put your finger on it. It's just very, very ethereal and beautiful. No, but I, the reason I really can't date a 24-year-old, in addition to, you know, it being obviously inappropriate, is I have a 14-year-old son. Any other parents here? Any parents? A few parents, nice some hand raises, some weak. <laughs> and uh, the rest of you, very cool. You're all very cool. You go out and see comedy shows on a Wednesday in the East Village. You're never gonna die. Uh, you know that. You're never gonna die, right? That's what you think? Yeah. Four years from now, you'll be in Scarsdale with three kids, like, what the hell happened to my life? Oh my God, how did that happen? So my son is a very, he's a good kid. Yeah, like I said, he's 14. When he was younger, he was, you know, a little bit harder, a little harder to deal with. And he's a great kid. We named him after uh, a woman with an old family name, uh, named him after my grandfather. Uh, his name is Grandpa. And <laughs> when Grandpa was five, he was uh, just tough to deal with. He wanted to play a video game and I wanted him to eat dinner. So we're going back and forth. I'm like, come on, just stop playing the game and have dinner. He's like, no, just stop, you can play after dinner. No, back and forth. Finally, I put my foot down. I was like, Grandpa, you gotta stop playing that game and then eat. And he got really quiet, he got mad. He looked at me and he looked at my wife and he looked back at me and he goes, Mama, kill him. <laughs> Jesus, man, that is intense. Also, it's lazy. 
you know, I mean, even Oedipus did his own work. You know what I mean? Like, come on, let's go. Also, that's the definition of impunity, to order a hit on somebody right in front of them from their spouse who's right there. Like, that's some big dick energy from a kid whose dick was like this big at the time. <laughs> But he's better now. He's, uh, he's 14, like I said. And he's like, it's an awkward age. You know, it's not, it's not the, the best time of your life. It's a lot of social pressures. You know, who's cool, who's not. In and out of cliques and stuff like that. And he was telling me when he was getting his bar mitzvah last year, he said, you know, there's this kid at Hebrew schools. He's just, he's really mean to everybody. He thinks he's the big shot of our Hebrew school. And at first I was like, oh my God, that's, who is this kid who's being mean to my son? And then I thought, hold on a second. Is there a lamer flex in the world than I'm the big shot of a Hebrew school? It's pretty pathetic, right? That's like being like, I'm the best looking person on this uh, 4 a.m. subway to Coney Island. All right. Yeah. Also, like, that is the only place the Jews could be tough, is around other Jews, you know? No non-Jews are afraid of Jews. That's just not how it works, you know? No one's ever been like, oh shit, man, Brian Weinstein's here. <laughs> it's Jacob Schwartz, he's gonna kick your ass. You're never gonna hear those sentences again, as long as you live. When I was a kid, me and all my Jewish friends got beat up by the Irish and Italian kids. Like, that's the pecking order. That's how it works, you know? It was like, you know, Tommy LaMarca, you know, Danny O'Brien, Patty Walsh, Anthony LaMotta. Like, my list of tormentors reads like a ship's manifest docking at Ellis Island in 1885. <laughs> Welcome to America. Here's your police badge. Now go beat up that tailor. There he is. He thinks he's a big shot of the tailor shop. Yeah, so I'm the divorced, as I said. My uh, ex-wife, we get along with great. I really did like her family. She grew up in Texas. Um, and I, they were all really great. You from Texas or you just love Texas? Anybody from Texas? Woo! Yeah? Cool. Close your ears. They're fucking crazy. Those people are crazy. Okay, open your ears up. No, I really, I had, a, I had a, a, a great time with them. They're really wonderful people. There's a little of a bit of a culture clash, though, coming from here, going down there. Every inch of their walls at my in-law's place was covered in either like a, a decorative cross, like a Jesus cross, or like a mounted stuffed deer head. So the whole place was like a monument to like the deaths of many animals and one guy, pretty much. <laughs> Um, and I mentioned I'm Jewish, obviously, so that was kind of weird, and I'm, I, I didn't say that I'm not a hunter, but I'm not a hunter. And just quickly, I want to dispel the stereotype of, like, the Jewish hunter. You know, a lot of people think, we're not all hunters, okay? <laughs> Some of us are cowboys and bodybuilders and nude models, so just, just give us our due. But one time, my brother-in-law from Texas came up to New York and we were uh, just giving him hummus, just a snack to eat. <laughs> and he was, uh, he was like, oh, y'all are eating that liberal hummus. Uh, and it was funny, cause it was, you know, it was done in good humor. Uh, it was like making fun of himself and us at the same time. And at first I thought, oh yeah, he's saying like, oh, liberals eat hummus. And then I thought, hold on a second. Does he mean that hummus itself is somehow liberal? And I think it kind of is. Like, if you think about hummus, it's a bunch of different ingredients. They're all blended together, make this pleasing sort of mocha color, and everyone around the world loves hummus. You could dip anything in there. Like, the ethos of hummus is liberal. And then it got me thinking, so, okay, so what's a conservative food? Red-blooded, all-American food. And it's not, you know, hamburgers or hot dogs or, like, you know, fried chicken or something like that. It's Lunchables. <laughs> and here's why. Because in Lunchables, uh, everything that's a different color is separated into its own little area, and they gave the cracker the biggest part. And that's how you know how American it is. Um, so the, my, I had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, experience dipped into the culture of Texas, and they name people things in Texas that are very different than what we name people things here in New York. Uh, maybe the people from Texas, this will be familiar to you. Uh, I have a, a nephew who named his son Dallas. His name is Dallas Downing. That's a great name, man. I would never name anybody that, you know, in my family, there's no Dallas Downings. That's a, that's a pretty solid Texas name. There was also a guy who grew up in uh, Texas who was a quarterback in the NFL. His name is Colt McCoy. I mean, come on. What else are you going to be than a quarterback? <laughs> your name is Colt McCoy. Your name is Colt McCoy, and your parents send you to college. Do not come home an orthodontist. They, they're going to be pissed, you know. If, and if you, what'd you say? Or a porn star. That is right. Thank you for screaming, porn star. He wasn't even listening. He's looking at his phone. Porn star. No, no, no. It is a great porn star name. Straight or gay. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Gay. Gay? Okay, fine. <laughs> That's okay. I'll be quiet. That's okay. I don't think you will, but I mean, just a warning to everybody else. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. I just took one on the chin for the rest of the comics. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It is, it is absolutely a, a gay porn star name. Um, it's not an orthodontist name. If you went to an orthodontist and he was like, hi, I'm Colton McCoy, he'd be like, you're a gay porn star. <laughs> um, we, work, we work together on that. Um, but my son, uh, you know, there are people here in New York, as I said, they're very different names. There are people his age that I know, I confirm, I swear these are real names. There is a dragon, there is a parsley, and there is a cafe. These are huge kids' names. I'm all for like, you know, whatever you want to do with your names, but taken together, like Dragon Parsley Cafe is a place in Park Slope that sells like <laughs> vegan water or something like that. Um, but I, I get a little like, I don't know, I get almost like spooked a little bit where I'm like, am I gonna like be over here, my son, talking to his friends, and they're gonna be like, oh my God, did you guys see Flannel last week at TikTok's party? He was totally making out with Billboard right in front of Canyon. But then Stucco and Mystery walked in and they were like, you guys, Basil and Tractor are having a party over at Nylon's house. And we wanted to go, but Seatbelt was the only one who had a car and they were hammered. So it was me and Caps Lock and Delete and Escape. And we all got in Hyundai's Honda and we went over there and it was a great party. Everybody was there. Uh, manual, uh, Spaniel, uh, Banner, Tanner, Scanner, uh, Copier, Printer, Monopoly, Fax Machine, 9-11. Everybody was there. It was a great party. All right, that's my time, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, sir.